Hello and welcome to a new uh, Lua tutorial where this time we're going to go over the basics of variables. Uh, it's going to be very uh, theory driven but uh, hopefully this will give you the foundation that you will never be confused uh, when writing your own code. Because the most important thing to writing your own code is understanding what you do. Alright, so variables. Uh, variables are declared with uh, by just assigning a value uh, to like a word. So if I have a value, uh, I want to give it a name that is descriptive of what it does. For example, if I want to have a timer var variable, I can call it timer, <clears throat> which is then just kind of some sort of timer, and I can assign something to it, like for example the number 500. Uh, now I have a timer which is 500, or rather a variable with a number 500 in it. Variables are kind of like buckets in uh, in the sense that um, they contain value and you can like use the equal symbol to um, give it a different value and like keep track of different stuff over time. For uh, example, what I can do is I can make timer equal to timer minus one in on tick. And uh, if I then make a function on draw, which uh, is where we want to draw stuff, uh, I can then do text.print timer somewhere on screen. Now there's uh, this timer counting down from 500. Uh, every tick it's gonna go down by one, and since on tick runs every frame, and there are approximately 64 frames per second in Smabex, it uh, goes down by approximately 64 uh, ticks per second. And as you can see, it also goes into the negatives, and if I speed demon it up, it starts going really fast because I just kept the frame speed in Smabex. <clears throat> so, what can we do with this? Uh, this is just kind of a number uh, for our timer, and we can have it count down, but uh, how do we like do stuff when uh, it reaches a certain point, for example? Uh, we can use variables in if statements, for example, uh, we can check if our variable timer, because uh, timer just resolves to like 500 or whatever it is at that point. If it's equal to uh, zero, like if it reached zero, then we can give the player a power up. This is like uh, the very, very most basic way to give a player a power up. Of course, you could also do stuff like spawn a mushroom on top of them, which is something uh, that would be more robust in a sense. Uh, I'm already power up too, for some reason. So uh, let's start again real quick. I'm actually gonna uh, put the timer down to 100 so that we can see the results more e more easily. So now I'm going to keep big. Uh, with the timer counting down and uh, timer checking zero, we can uh, do stuff based on a condition, which is really neat because uh, a lot of code will uh, use this kind of pattern where we want to check if something is uh, in a certain state before running code. So, uh, going back to the concept of variables, there is a certain thing you need to understand, which is scope. Uh, this local stuff here makes sure that uh, outside of the Lua file, nothing else can access this timer. Um, if we were to move it into like a further indented part of the code, like the onStart function, um, the there would be an error, <laughs> because timer is now nil in onTick. Uh, as soon as like a local variable hits the next end on the same indentation level, uh, it's discarded. It's gonna be cleaned up by the garbage collection. So uh, you want to uh, do that for keeping variables you only need for a certain amount of time, for that amount of time, but if you want something to persist throughout your entire file, you want to declare it at the top space so that it can be accessed by every function in your code. So what other kind of variables are there? Um, some of you who've already programmed before will of course know uh, some of the classics. Uh, for example, um, there could be a boolean, which is either true or false. It's like a division symbol, but true or false. These are not equal to one or zero, unlike in like languages like GameMaker. These are a um, different data type, which is explicitly defined as true and false. Um, one thing I want to note about the number 
is that the number uh, does not differentiate with, between an integer and a uh, decimal number. So you can also just use the numbers as 0.5, uh, 100.5, and uh, decrement by point, uh, point 0.1 to have like a slower decrease. But as you can see, it will uh, after a while lead to floating point inaccuracies. Uh, so you want to like balance what you do so that either these don't matter in your code or uh, you know how to account for them. So this uh, timer check timer equals zero. If I were to uh, do this and then go down to like 10, uh, would be probably not hit because the floating point errors would have accu accumulated and I didn't get the power up. So uh, in this scenario, you would check uh, less than equals zero um, to make sure that the code runs even if it uh, misses the zero uh, precisely. And now I'm big again. So uh, another type of variable is a uh, string, which is just a piece of text. So uh, you can uh, store different pieces of text, uh, which you can use in different uh, scenarios, just like any other variable, of course. And what I can do, for example, is say uh, there is a timer. This is my variable with like timer and then a space. Uh, and I'm gonna print my string here, uh, concatenate that with the timer to get like um, the timer and then a colon and then the timer itself. And what I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna also change the string to uh, negative timer to get uh, some kind of change inside the variable just to display that you can also change the string variable. Uh, there is one more um, important type of variable. Well, actually there is two, but uh, the other one I don't want to touch on right now. So uh, the important one I want to mention is the table, which is uh, defined with curly braces. Um, and w if you think of a variable as a type of box where you put stuff in, then a table is a type of box which you put other boxes in. What you can do is uh, you can put variables inside of a table and these variables can be of any other type including tables. Um, so you can, it's like if you're familiar with the concept an array or a list in other programming languages. So what you can do is uh, you can um, type, okay our, our first entry is uh, 5, our second entry is two, a third entry is one. Now we have a table where um, one, the entries one, two, and three map to five, two, and one, uh, which is uh, something we can make use of through uh, our timer here. If we uh, change this player to power up to uh, player to power up equals table at index table entry. We want to keep track of the table entry ourselves table entry is 1, and then uh, we reset timer to 50 and say table entry is table entry plus 1, so that uh, we access a different entry in the table the next time. So now I'm Tanuki, now I'm big, now I'm small, and now the code crashes because there is nothing else in the table. Uh, I've just gone through like the 5 to 1 and applied that to the power up of the player uh, with like significantly less code than if I were to make an if-else chain out of it. Tables are a really, really complicated concept, and uh, I don't expect you to understand them right away. Um, but they will crop up in the future, and uh, since this is like a really theoretical experiment, uh, I hope some of the more practical experiments in the future will uh, do a better job at uh, explaining them than this um, quick example with the timer counting down and giving you a different power-up. Um, tables are used by a lot of Lua, uh, it's kind of what makes the language uh, what it is, and <clears throat> you will also meet them uh, at a lot of intersections in your uh, time working with it. Uh, in the next episode, I will go into more practical examples of using Lua in your levels to augment the playing experience, and we will uh, also meet some more use cases and ways to use tables uh, in that tutorial. So I hope you look forward to that, and I hope you learned something today. 
and I'll see you next time.